Hey everyone, and welcome to my little video about making a bake video. Here's the deal, every once in a while I like to change it up, I like to keep it fresh, I like to give myself and the clones a little break because the covers are a lot of work, and I thought it might be interesting to talk about what it's like to do this big of a project from an independent artist position when you're doing it all yourself. Also, for those of you who are interested, you can hear that I have a speaking voice and not just a singing voice. Um, I'm not one of those people who sings everything. But can you imagine if I did this whole video singing, like, Les Mis style? That would be incredibly obnoxious. I'll be answering some questions that you sent me on Patreon and Instagram. It was a while back. You probably thought that I forgot about this video. You probably thought I forgot about your questions, but I did not. It just took me a really long time to do it. I'm also going to be running a little giveaway with some of the paper props that were used in this video, so stay tuned and I'll talk about that at the end. So let's get started. First questions are about if we decided the look and the color and the story of the video. Short answer is yes, we decided everything. I worked with my friend Tom Goss on this video. You may have seen him on this channel before. You may have seen me on his channel. Uh, it's in the description. You can't miss it. He was my director and my co-producer and my co-production designer, so we decided everything. This video concept started with some ideas that I had when I was writing the song. So the original concept was me destroying an apartment kitchen with a sledgehammer. I really, really, really wanted to break a wall. And then intercut with that, I imagined go-go dancers, like 60s go-go dancers on platforms or boxes. And they're all me, like very inspired by the look of the, these boots are made for walking music video by Nancy Sinatra. Right off the bat, I knew it was never gonna be possible for me to destroy a kitchen on my budget. It does not. So then I had this idea of like an abstract, surreal, minimalist set. So I was chatting with Tom about the release of this EP and my music video plans. And I said, I have this idea for a song and I really wanna do a video for this song, but none of my director friends have bitten yet. And he was like, well, we could do it. And he told me he had just started to get into directing. And so over the course of several really long walks around the neighborhood, co friendly way to have a meeting, um, we worked out the details and we were like, yeah, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it ourselves. Next question is about the how and why of the colors in the video. So we did go in a few different directions. Initially, we explored several different options, including like a more literal story about a problem roommate, but I never wanted it to be that. I always kept coming back to this idea of destruction on an abstract, minimalistic, very stylized set. So to add a little more spice to that original concept of mine, Tom came up with the idea of using two contrasting colors and creating a set that was monochrome. We also switched it over to a 50s aesthetic rather than 60s like I was originally thinking, but we did keep the idea of the backup dancers on the platforms. Which by the way, we created the platforms and from what they are, I think they look damn good. The box itself is a plyo box, which I think is like a CrossFit thing or something. I found it for cheap on Facebook Marketplace because budget, and I had to go to this really weird warehouse downtown. It was like really hard to find, and I'm not gonna go into any more details because I'm worried it might have been something sketchy. I don't know how. I just feel like there were sketchy vibes. Um, and then we covered the box in foam poster board that was like cut to the sides of the box and just attached it with tape. Um, so for what it actually is, which is like a piece of junk, it looks really good, right? Like that looks pro. You would never guess that that's foam board. And then when the video was done, we took the foam board off and I resold the box on Facebook Marketplace because that's how you stay on budget. So yeah, I digress a little bit there, but basically we solidified the video concept. Tom, as the director, worked on a script and worked on a shot list, and then we moved into pre-production. Tom and I were co-producing and co-production designing, so it really all fell onto us. And when I found out that my old roommate was gonna be moving out of her room and leaving it empty for a couple weeks, 
we saw the perfect opportunity to shoot a music video. Renting a location is usually a big chunk of the production budget and we knew that for our concept we needed to rent a location for several days in a row because of the painting. So if we could take that cost out of the equation we knew we would save money and that would help us stay on budget. Count the number of times I say budget in this video, oh my god, but <laughs> the budget is really important. It, like as an independent artist this is a huge consideration for a music video. So. I guess it's fitting that I'm talking about it so much. The timing of my roommate moving and shooting this music video was just perfect serendipitous timing because it gave us more room to relax as we were in pre-production as I'll talk about now when I talk about using my apartment. So for our video, we knew that we had to build three rooms and we spent about two weeks scouring the streets for furnishings for these three rooms. And when I say scouring the streets, I mean literally scouring the streets. Like we were picking junk up off the curb. For some reason, Tom Street is just a magnet for people dumping stuff there. We kept a running list of things that we had and things that we needed, and to fill in the gaps, I either placed online orders or went to stores to find things. In this picture, you can see some of the stuff that we had collected in the weeks before the video shoot. This is a part of my living room and we just completely took it over. Obviously, it didn't all come that color though, so once we had our set design pieces, we took a trip to the hardware store, we took these curtains that we had ordered, pink and yellow for color matching, and then we had them mix up a couple gallons of paint for us, and we grabbed a couple cans of spray paint in those colors as well, and we got to work. I mean, we had already been working, but we got to working even more. I had recently painted my apartment's living room, so I wasn't afraid of paint, but I was a little afraid of how long it was gonna take. Thankfully, Tom had once worked a summer job as a house painter, and he reassured me that things would go really quickly, he knew exactly what equipment to buy, and things went super smoothly with a professional on the team. In two painting days, we had the first round ready, which is two yellow walls, yellow furniture, and yellow decorations. We gathered all the yellow items that we could possibly a mass because apart from the big furniture items, we weren't exactly sure how we were gonna style each of the rooms. So we wanted to have lots of options. And the day before our shoot, we staged our yellow room. Here it is. The production itself was pretty intense as well because we had two shoot days, which a music video would normally only take one day to shoot. And when I say day, I mean production day. So a normal production day would be 12 hours, but a music video can often stretch to 14 hours. 16 maybe even because you have to get it all done on one day. It's brutal. Our first production day was the more difficult one because that was when we shot all the colored sequences and we had to paint at several times during the day. So of course we had decided beforehand what order to do things in and made a shot list that told us exactly what we needed to get and first thing on the agenda in the morning was shooting out all of the yellow room sequences so that means that I was destroying the yellow room first thing in the morning. It was so fun. I wish I could have done it more than once. After I got to break stuff with a bat, which I repeat was so much fun, we began our first painting stage on the back wall. So we left all the destruction as it is and we shot that stop motion title sequence. Then after that title sequence, we started to cover that wall in pink. We took advantage to grab this really fun performance shot with the disembodied hands painting behind me. I love this one. Now this kind of leads me into a question from Patreon about lip syncing at different speeds. So for this day, we had three different versions of the song that I would be lip syncing to. We had normal speed, we had 50% at half speed, slow, and then we had fast at 200%. This particular performance shot was lip synced to the slow version of the song, so the way it works is when I'm singing the slow version and then we put it up to normal speed, it appears that I'm singing at normal speed, but when the people in the background who were moving at normal speed when I was singing the slow version, when it gets sped up to normal, then it appears that they're moving in fast motion. So there are a couple moments like that. This opening shot of the video is another example. Music videos use a lot of tricks like that. It's a great tool. Now, while one of our yellow walls was being turned pink by our resident professional painter, Tom, I also had some friends of mine working as production assistants, PAs, to give you the film set lingo. <laughs> I don't even think that counts as lingo, like everyone knows that. Um, 
but I had my friends working as PAs painting some of the props. The next sequence we were gonna shoot was the pink and yellow reconciliation dinner, so we had a couple yellow props that we had to transition into pink and yellow. We painted half the smiley face face, we added some pink flowers into the bouquet, and we painted half of the Live Laugh Love poster too. Should I talk about the Live Laugh Love poster? I kept it. Okay, it's messing up my lighting, so I'm gonna put it down. The Love Laugh Love print was a framed piece of art that I found at Goodwill. We took the art out, put a yellow painted piece of poster board in there, painted that frame yellow, and then I wrote the Live Laugh Love lettering on there. We picked that phrase and the other phrases that you can see around the yellow roommate's room because we wanted her to be like a representation of toxic positivity, like so obnoxiously positive and that's why we picked that phrase. And then of course, we added some pink details into the print for the dinner scene um, so we could represent the two roommates coming together. On our first shoot day, we ate lunch as we waited for that one pink wall to dry and then we staged that half and half pink and yellow roommate dinner scene. Here's my apartment kitchen on the day of the shoot, an absolute mess. It's a mix of snacks and drinks for the crew, which is called Crafty and there's more set lingo for you, and also a staging area for props. This brings me to probably the most important question in the video, which is what happened to the cupcakes and I am afraid I have to tell you I have no idea what happened to the cupcakes. We had four of them. Two of them got decorated with pink sprinkles to be used as props, but there were two left over. I don't know where they went. They probably got thrown away or maybe someone took them home. I'm not sure, the day was such a blur. If you find them in the dumpster, they are free game. And moving on to this question about catering, um, judging by the state of this counter, I don't wanna expose the catering clone. Nah, I'm just kidding, it was me. Um, I went on a couple days before to get snacks and drinks for everyone, and then I set everything out in the morning before people arrived. I also had someone pick up coffee on the way in, and then it also got used as a prop staging area because some of our props were food, so, that's why it doesn't look good. I mean, on a big set, this would be like a team of people or one person's entire job would be like to provide meals and snacks and drinks for the cast and crew. But on a small set, it's usually something like this. It's just someone goes and buys stuff and sets it out for everyone. So one of our PAs went and picked up lunch, classic, typical PA job. I have been a PA, I love PAs. PAs are so underappreciated and they work so hard. They are on their feet for 12 hours and they get no love for it. So this is me sending love to PAs. I could go on about conditions on film sets. And that's in my limited experience because I've chosen to stop taking those gigs because they're exhausting and they're grueling. And I don't want my sets to be like that ever. Anyway, I digressed again. During lunch, I also changed from my destruction coveralls outfit into my pink dress. In this picture, you can see some of the hair and makeup artist tools. Mari, our hair and makeup artist, was amazing and so knowledgeable about vintage styles. This kind of wave took about 90 minutes to do between prepping my hair with pin curls, which is where you take tiny sections of the hair and then you curl them up like into a spiral and then you put a pin on them in a certain pattern all around your head. Then you had to let those set, then you had to take them all out, then you had to brush them out into a certain pattern, and then you had to set the hair into that wave pattern. I'm obsessed with this hair, I loved it so much. Mari did an amazing job, I loved how it looked, I loved how it made me feel. I just wish I could do it every day on myself because, ah. Uh, then it was time to bring in some pieces of pink furniture and that half and half pink and yellow table and shoot the dinner scene. Can we just take a moment for the details and the contrasts here? The poster with the pink accents, the different styles of the chairs, short hair, long hair, pattern dress, solid dress, apron, no apron, I could go on. And the vase that somehow miraculously broke to have a missing piece that looks like a mole right where I have, I cannot. And the line that we created right down the middle of the frame with the wall and the table alternating pink and yellow, it's so visually satisfying. I absolutely love it. After we shot that dinner scene, we had to paint again. So we emptied everything out of the room and we painted that other wall pink. We really took our time setting up and perfecting the details of the pink room because that was what the roommate was gonna be messing with in the background of that opening shot of the video. And unlike the yellow room, we had never seen the 
the pink room set up before. Here's a fun wide angle shot of the room where you can see some of the lighting that was in there. You can't see it in the picture, but there is a closet on the left hand wall that was also turned into a giant light. So we took the closet door off its hinges, we put a bunch of lights in the closet, and then we covered the whole door opening with a piece of translucent plastic, so it turned the closet into a giant soft box. It just makes the light nice and diffuse, less harsh. What you see on the camera is just the size of this rug, nothing more. This room is about 12 by 12, and the rug is, I think, 8 by 10. Pretty small space that we were working in. We also took the main door of the room off its hinges to give everyone easier access in there. For the gradual zooming out action of our opening shot, we set up a dolly coming into the room. Here you can see a picture of the tracks and our director of photography, our DP Justin, and director Tom in the background with his shirt matching the video. Amazing. Notice you can kind of see in the background how everything in the living room has been pushed to the side to make room for people and prop furniture. And you can also see up at the top there that we've covered the skylight with a trash bag so that the changing light didn't affect anything on screen. There are so many little details like that that go into any production. And whew, we finished in the pink room and we finished our first shoot day. In those couple days after that shoot, a lot of things went down to the curb again. <laughs> They returned from whence they came and a lot of things went to the dumpster as well, but not everything. I kept a couple things. And since the new roommate who was coming in didn't want two walls beige and two walls pink, which I don't know why, but whatever, I painted all four of the walls white. Now we had planned since the beginning to do this shoot across two different days. Because of the painting, it was just too much to do in one shoot day. So the colorful apartment was day one and then the black and white sequences were day two. Our first shoot day was a full day, probably 13, 14 hours with a crew of eight people, but our second one was much quicker and much easier. We rented a studio space for about six hours and we had four people, me, the director Tom, the DP Justin, and our hair and makeup artist Maury. Oh, and uh, two clones. There was pre-production prep for the shoot day, but not nearly as much as there was for the first day. One thing that I did is I worked with my old friend from dance, Daphne, on clonography that I could do while standing on the boxes. So it had to be within a very small footprint area. And then it also had to respect invisible boundaries vertically because we were gonna stitch three separate takes into the same frame. So if you cross one of these vertical lines, the whole thing becomes much more complicated to edit. And the shoot only took a few hours. We got wide shots of each of the three clones performing. We got a couple takes of a medium shot and a couple takes of a close up in the performance. And honestly, it was so much fun. I felt like it was over way too soon. I wanted to keep performing. And this black and white footage we got looked so amazing that I wished we had a longer song so we could put more of it in. Here's a question about this sequence from Patreon about the clones not wearing gloves and it was on purpose to differentiate them. I felt like the lead needed to have something a little more special so she had the gloves and she also had the pearls which were my grandma's. And when we finished shooting it was time to move into post-production so Tom took it and did a rough cut at home. I went over there and saw it later and we fixed a couple things and tweaked a couple things, but I'm really glad that he did the rough cut because we had so much good stuff and we had so many good takes that I think it would have been really, really hard for me to choose and really hard for me to cut anything. When the edit was finished, it was time to color grade and this was a new experience for me. So I've done a little bit of basic color grading on some of my stuff, but I have no expertise and no formal training, no professional experience in it whatsoever. Our color grading genius was Roy at Reason Studios and to see a professional work on my video was truly amazing. Like in two hours he did what would have taken me a week and better than I could have ever done it. Sitting in that session and seeing him work and seeing me on the big screen was really one of those moments of like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. And really the making of this whole video was an experience like that from a concept that seemed unreachable to me. We turned it into something that I am so proud of and I have to shout out my patrons for that because it's thanks to them that we had the budget to do this video. All right, now let me talk to you about this giveaway. So these are some of the props that we had in the yellow roommate's apartment. There were things from her notebook and there were these post-its that were on the furniture and on the wall. 
and I kept them and I want to send them to some people. Can you see what I was talking about earlier with like the toxic positivity roommate? You go girl, dance in the rain, like these super cheesy phrases. <laughs> I want to give you some of this positivity. Eight winners are going to be picked randomly from my email mailing list. That's it. You just have to be on my mailing list. I promise I'm not gonna spam you. I'm not gonna be annoying. I send email blasts less than once a month, honestly. I think my last one was like five months ago or something, which is um, probably a little too long. But anyway, um, I just send big news, like big music video releases like this one was, or original music releases and stuff like that. If you're already on my email mailing list, thank you so much and you're already automatically entered. If you're not, let me tell you how to do it. It's super easy. All you have to do is go to my website annreburn.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, put your email in here, click this checkbox, submit, and you are in. If you sign up for emails through either my store or my Bandcamp page, not to worry, you are included as well. I'm gonna merge all of those lists into one master list once this giveaway is over. It's gonna run for seven days, so you've got a week to sign up, and then make sure you check that email because I'm gonna be emailing you if you're selected. You can check that pinned comment down below for more information and all of the details. And I think that's it for me. I wonder how long this video is gonna be. I talked a lot. I do not normally talk this much. I'm parched, honestly. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting me and allowing me to continue as an independent artist and to do video projects like this. If you haven't already, I'd love if you'd watch the music video and check out my original music on Spotify. Give me a follow over there. It would mean a lot to me. In the meantime, you have my Twitter and my Instagram at here and roar. I also made a TikTok at Ann Reburn if you want to follow me over there. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but um, there you have it if you wanna see what I decide to do with it. And uh, sorry for all the plugging, I just, I don't have a chance to do this when I do the cover, so when I do have the opportunity, it's like I have to plug everything. Anyway, thank you again so much and I'll see you next time, bye.